According to the United States Geological Survey website, the National Earthquake Information Center now locates about 20,000 earthquakes around the globe each year, approximately 55 per day. The infamous 1692 earthquake is probably the most prominent in our minds as Jamaicans. I mean, we lost a portion of the island to it. It was the largest and most destructive felt all across Jamaica, but Port Royal definitely got the brunt of it. According to the Port Royal Jamaica History website, the 1692 earthquake caused most of the city to sink below sea level. About 2,000 people died as a result of the earthquake and the following tsunami, and another 3,000 people died in the following days due to injuries and disease. Let's have a look at historical earthquakes that have happened in Jamaica from the 1600s to present day. The earthquake unit records an earthquake happening in the year 1667 with a maximum intensity of 8, no location was listed. And then another happens in 1688 in Port Royal. Now after the 1692 earthquake, there was one in 1771 in Port Royal and Kingston, 1812 in Kingston, 1824 in Kingston, St. Catherine and Clarendon, and 1839, this time in Montego Bay, St. James. All of these were between a maximum intensity of 7 and 9. Now, before we move on to the other major earthquakes in Jamaica, I had to do some research on this maximum intensity MMI scale being referenced here. Here is what I found. The modified Mercalli intensity MMI estimates the shaking intensity from an earthquake at a specific location by considering its effects on people, objects, and buildings. At high intensities, above MMI 6, Earthquake shaking damages buildings. While the Mercalli scale describes the intensity of an earthquake based on its observed effects, the Richter scale describes the earthquake's magnitude by measuring the seismic waves that cause the earthquake. The two scales have different applications and measurement techniques. So one is based on observed effects while the other is based on seismic waves. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's move on. In 1907, there was another earthquake called the Great Kingston Quake in which over 1,000 people died and across Jamaica, 9,000 people became homeless. This was a maximum intensity of 9. They did not only have to contend with the earthquake and aftershocks, as a fire also broke out and there was more. The earthquake was followed by a seismic wave or tsunami. All contemporary accounts agree that the wave on the north coast arrived at points from Port Antonio to St. Anne's Bay very shortly after the earthquake, the usual estimate being about three minutes. The velocity of tsunami's waves in water of this depth is of the order of 150 meters per second so that on this basis the position of generation of the tsunami must have been about 27 kilometers or 17 miles from the north coast in the region of Anata Bay. This conclusion is supported by the fact that the waves were not observed on the south coast. After this there were two historical earthquakes one took place in 1914 in eastern Jamaica, the other in 1943 in St. Elizabeth. The next seismic event took place in 1957, but this time western Jamaica got the brunt of it, with St. James recording most of the devastation. There were three deaths, three fires, and damage to buildings, bridges, and roads. After that, the site listed the following earthquakes. One in Kingston and St. Andrew in 1993, which was felt island-wide. Another in 2005 in central Jamaica, felt strongest in Clarendon, Manchester, and Trelawney. In 2020, there was an island-wide and regional event that included Cayman and Cuba. I think you remember that one. It happened in January, and I think it was about 7.7 .7 or 7 point something. Now, I was wondering about the missing dates, but I think it's probably because this list only mentions earthquakes above a certain magnitude, or as the title says, historical earthquakes. 
Because when I checked some of the missing years, earthquakes or tremors did take place, for example. And remember, there are a lot of seismic events taking place yearly, but not all of them are felt. For example, there were 458 seismic events registered by the earthquake unit in Jamaica in 2021. Only seven were felt. There were 414 seismic events in 2022. Only eight were felt. But here's the whopper. According to the University of the West Indies Earthquake Unit, there were whopping 18 earthquakes in 2020, ranging from a magnitude of 2.8 to 7.2. 2020 was just a sugar beer. Now, let's talk about 2023. This is from the Earthquake Unit Uimona website. I have all the links in the description box so you can check out everything I've discussed here so far. The first earthquake of 2023 happened on the 29th of January, magnitude of 3.5 in Port Antonio. On April 15th, Yalas Plant and Garden Fault Zone, St. Thomas Parish, 4.9. April 18, Blue Mountains Block, Portland Parish, 2.8. May 7th, Yalas Plant and Garden Fault Zone, St. Thomas Parish, 3.7. May 16, Yellows Plant and Garden Fault Zone, St. Thomas Parish, 3.3. September 21, Blue Mountains Block, St. Andrew Parish. September 22, Blue Mountains Block, Portland Parish, 3.6. October 30, Blue Mountains Block, St. Andrew Parish, 5.6. And this is the most recent. And I hope that's it for this year. Now, according to this website, these are frequently asked questions regarding earthquakes. Why are we having so many earthquakes? Has naturally occurring earthquake activity been increasing? Does this mean a big one is going to hit? Or we haven't had any earthquakes in a long time. Does this mean that the pressure is building up for a big one? Now, their response. A temporary increase or decrease in seismic activity is part of the normal fluctuation of earthquake rates. Neither an increase nor decrease worldwide is a positive indication that a large earthquake is imminent. I hope this response allays your fears.